Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me here today. Um, I literally just finished watching Tommy Boy back there, so I think I got an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing today. But all joking aside, I'm here. My name is Andrew Sarega on behalf of The Anchor, which is a new stablecoin project that we're bringing forward, which I believe will have an impact on our global financial system akin to the creation of the Federal Reserve in the early 1900s. And I know what you're thinking. It's like, that is a bold statement to be making. And you know what? You're right, that is a bold statement to be making, but I said it, I can't take it back, and my hope is that by the end of this presentation, you will see the project in the same light as I do. So let's begin with you know, what sets the anchor apart from stable coins out there today. Um, if you look at you know, stable coins such as Tether, for example, they're pegged to the US dollar, others are pegged to real estate, gold, whatever you would have. But there seems to be an issue with that. Let's take the dollar, for example. So you have the dollar, you peg, uh, you peg your coin to it, but the problem is the dollar's volatile, right? It moves up and down. Every day it's being traded and it has a different value. The other problem is you can manipulate the dollar. Large market force comes out, can drop the value, increase the value, so on and so forth. And number three, which is this slide right here, you're basically putting your money in something that devalues over time in terms of purchasing power. The dollar you have your hand in your hand, in, in your hand today will not be the same dollar you have in your hand 10 years from now. It'll be worth less. So basically, what we said is we need to first fix that problem of valuation over time. So what has the anchor done? Well, it's created this thing called the MMU. And let me just apologize, you know, my team had a beautiful pitch deck prepared. I'm not a pitch deck kind of guy. You know, I'm all about wearing my heart on my sleeve. So if you want to see the whole pitch deck, it's available on our website, theanchor.io. But I'm just going to take you through the vision, you know, take this journey with me, if you will. So the MMU, what is that? Well, basically, our CEO had this idea a number of years back. And he said, listen, I want to find a peg that we can use that basically has stability over time. And so what he did is he got together with some very, very smart individuals and they developed this proprietary algorithm that basically takes indicators such as macroeconomic indicators, real GDP, PPP, currency of 20 nations basically valued every day, and they were able to compute this nominal value that is the worth of the world economy at any one given point. And they did so over a period of about 30 years where they took this data. So what you see on that graph is basically since 1993, the value of the world economy has grown 23%. But if you think about it, during that time we've had two, three recessions. One of them was probably the second worst in the history of the global markets. And so even during that time, you still have a steady growth. Why? Well, if you think about it, the one thing on earth that never stops increasing is population. The more people you have, the more goods you consume, and obviously the economies keep growing because we have growing populations. So this MMU gives a stable peg that has an increasing value over time. So if you, let's say, put your money in the anchor today and take it out 10 years from now, you will have the same value, if not enhanced value, once you do that. So right off the bat, a novel concept that preserves you the value of your investment. Now, I know some people are probably thinking, well, great, that's a, that's a number, but how do we trust your number? Well, we've developed a concept that we call the Board of Validators. Now, the Board of Validators is comprised of 20 entities that are gonna be large financial institutions, large insurance providers that basically have a hand in the global financial market. And why do we do that? Because at the end of the day, we wanted two things. Number one, legitimacy. These institutions putting their name behind this project, number one, lends a level of trust. But more importantly, number two, it decentralizes the project. It takes power out of the hands of those at the anchor and it spreads it around so that it can't be manipulated. That's the goal, to have a currency that can't be manipulated by any one entity or even a group of entities. So the MMU has this board of validators, great thing, now we're looking at, okay, well, how do you control the value of the anchor because you're going to have daily traders. Yeah, you have a peg, but how do you keep the anchor value at the peg? Well, one of the line of defenses that we've developed is actually a hybrid token system. 
So you have the anchor that's actually being traded, but you also have what we call the dock. Now the dock is not publicly available, can't touch it. Basically it's used as a mechanism to stabilize the anchor coin itself. And how do you do that? Let's say for example, the anchor starts dropping in price. It gets below a certain threshold. Well that automatically triggers an auction where people can take their anchors, put them into docks, those anchors are burned, they're gone. So in essence, we're taking an economic principle of supply and demand and we're limiting supply to increase demand and thus you increase the price. Now those people, those investors, that put their anchors into docks, they have an incentive to do so based on two factors, how quickly you do it and the volume of anchors that you put in. Because obviously there's gonna be a certain amount that has to be put in to stabilize the price. And in doing so, that formula is calculated and you get a percentage back. So once it's stabilized and anchors are reintroduced into the system, you get your 5% extra, your 7% extra. Basically, it's, it goes on that calculation of time and, uh, and volume. Let's say, for example, the price starts going up instead. What do you do then? Well, you actually take anchors and you put them into circulation. Why? Because again, you're trying to stabilize the price at that peg. We don't want an investor to come in, start pumping up the price, speculating on it and hoping that he makes a quick buck. That's not what this is. This is a stable coin that we are looking to basically create value over time. And so we want to eliminate those kind of events. So by putting anchors into the system, you're actually reducing the price again and you're eliminating the possibility of those people coming in and doing that. But all these things are nice. You know, you have your, your novel peg, you have your, your mechanism of stabilization, but what gives the anchor any value? And I think that's, this is probably the most interesting part of this whole project. We're looking at taking the investment that we get and reinvesting it into a secure investment, but more importantly, sovereign debt. Now you ask, why would you do that? Sovereign debt, you know, we, we've been hearing a lot about countries defaulting and, and whatnot, but the truth is, if you think about it, that is one of the most secure investments you can make. If a country ever devo defaults, their economy is in the dump, their currency is trash, everything else has gone down the drain, realistically, that's the last thing to go. So in essence, it is the safest way to hold your money. But there's another thing that actually gives credence to the importance of it, why? you get a return on investment. There's an interest yield, 3%, 4%, whatever is being offered. That's also tax-free revenue. So what we, we do is we take that revenue and we put it back in the system to stabilize the anchor even further, a micro-stabilization. And that goes to, again, the overall theme of we're looking to stabilize it over the long term. But it does one more thing. And you know, people ask you, well, what about black swan events? What if someone starts playing with it, they're dumping it, your dock system isn't working, your reserve that you have from uh, your interest yields, that's not helping, what do you do then? Well, the beauty of bonds is they're very liquidable. You can sell those. In that situation, what you do is you take the bond, you sell it, and it's already backed one-to-one -one with that initial investment. The investors get their money back. Might not be all of it, but you know what? It'll be a very, very large portion, if not most. And that, at the end of the day, is part of the brilliance of this project. What investment do you know of that's 100% risk-free? There aren't any. But your goal is to try to hedge it to make it as safe as possible. And that's what this project does. So that's a little bit about the anchor, kind of the, the ins and outs, but I want to share with you kind of what really got me drawn to this project, the vision of it. The Anchor is not a stabilization project. It's actually an integration project. What we are looking to do is through the purchase of sovereign debt, what do we get, what does that government get from that? They get funds that they can use for capital improvement projects, infrastructure, basically increasing their economy. That does two things. Number one, by them increasing their economy, they now increase the value of your Anchor because your MMU is growing. But number two, and I would argue much more importantly, is it now provides a mechanism by which these countries can not only grow, but it really gives them a reason to then integrate this project into their financial system. So again, the trade-off is we're willing to invest in your country and provide you a funding mechanism, which any government in the world wants, but in return, we require 
regulations, we require legislation passed that would allow this currency to be used in your financial system. And in doing so, the more people use it, the more funds returned and reinvested to be able to increase additional funds for these governments. So if you think about it, the reality is crypto doesn't survive without integration. There has to be some mode of integration, and that's what this project really does. It takes a novel concept, it applies it to world economics, and the whole scope is to be able to get crypto integrated into financial systems. What you can do off that is now you have a stable platform which you can build other cryptos on. Let's say, for example, you want to develop a cryptocurrency for real estate transactions, for art, for any number of things. You now have the ability to do that because you have a project that's literally integrated into these financial systems and is constantly being used for daily purchases. So I think the vision's great, project's great, but what really makes this a reality? And at the end of the day, it's the team behind it. And that's what, to me, is actually the most impressive. Our CEO, Daniel Popa, has assembled individuals from all over the world, North America. Yeah, please. He, the, man is, the man is a genius. He's, he's the brains behind this whole thing. Um, we have a team strewn across North America, Europe, Asia. You have PhDs in mathematics, economics, experts in the financial industry, software developers, totaling over 30 people at this point. And pretty faces like me, because that's apparently all I am. But... My point being is you have a very strong team that's looking to take this project from where it is now, a creation phase, into implementation. And I think we have the ability to do it. What we're looking for is partners, people looking to join us in this venture to be able to actually integrate crypto into mainstream market systems and allow it to be used as a transactional currency. So with that being said, um, I know all of you value your time and I've timed this pretty well where I'm keeping it under 15 minutes, but I'd like to leave you with one last thought. Uh, every once in a while, I do a little bit of thinking. I think it's a good exercise for the brain, even though sometimes I don't get that from my body. But at the end of the day, people are never remembered. History doesn't remember people for dreams that they have today. You get remembered for the success you achieve tomorrow. So in order to be impactful and to be remembered, you have to turn dreams into reality. That's what we're trying to do with the anchor, and that's what we will do. The goal is to take the vision we have in our heads today and turn it into tools in our hands tomorrow. And I know that we can do that with your help. So if you have any additional questions, which I would be shocked if you didn't, because it is a very bold project, we're available at booth 206. We're available at theanchor.io. Please go ahead and reach out to us. And with that being said, I would bid you all a wonderful day. Thank you for your time, and God bless.